before. I would cry a lot. Why? I was scary. Could have been my father. So dope. Was in prison. How do you deal with this? Everyone's calling him up and saying, hey, what do you think about this? Some of the things on this job, I mean, it'll keep a lot of people up. We are not called to be like that. It just hurts. Lord, I need you. I need you to intervene. This is heavy. This is hard. You gotta go five right here. If I get a one. Who is blue? You never know what you're gonna get into in this house. Did you see that slide? Yes. I, I love to play the, the, the board game. Oh, he loves the board game. I love the board game. If we're against each other, I don't, he's not gonna win. And if he does, I'm angry. Like, I have a bad the, attitude. The thing is, even if we were and playing with the to... kids, we're playing with the kids, she'll win. do anything she can to just prevent me from winning. Cause he's just good at everything. It's just like one of those things, like you're good at everything. Can I be good at something? Road trips. Road trips, we love road trips. Road. We go all out. I love maps. Say what you really call me. <laughs> what do I call you? Did you call me a navigator yes. or a nag-a-gator? <laughs> Cause I nag him. <laughs> That's what you really want to say. You want popcorn? You can get your ticket. Would you like to buy some popcorn? Yeah. We watch a lot of movies together. Like I'll make popcorn. Yes. Homemade popcorn. That's like every Thursday. Oh, I took it here. That's my favorite. I knew I wanted a big family. With our older three, it was girl, boy, girl. So then the last three is boy, boy, boy. Yeah. They come, they come. Mm -hmm. I guess <laughs> bring them on. <laughs> Tell you, 22. Beautiful, inside and out. Talia right now, she's married. She also joined to become a part of the US Navy. PJ is 20, definitely on fire for God. On fire. He has many talents, football is one of them. I am a child of God, and no amount of catches or no catches could take that away from me. It's all God, and all glory to Him. He's so humble about it. He'll get us together and like do weird challenges. Like we had to do this whipped cream challenge and like toss oh, it in the air and catch one. it. Arkaya, I'm 18, and I like to dance. Whatever she does, she does very well. A one upper. <laughs> a one upper. I don't even want to hear your dice rolling. When you're around her, you feel nice and happy. That's my baby girl. Bishop, 10 years old. He's like the best annoying brother. Konnichiwa. He's our do everything. I like sometimes speaking different languages. He gets awards in class. Next president, great leader. Passionate. He's an amazing kid. Silas is our spunky six-year-old, and I call him his twin. It's just a little teeny version of him. At six, he is a grown <laughs> yes, man. Yes, he is. <laughs> he really is. Listen, he will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever. Oh. I am six, I play video games. This one's a character. I love him, I do. Ezra is four years old. He's funny. He's a funny guy. <laughs> Ezra is very amazing. Inside and out. You can... He loves watching movies. Ezra's love. <laughs> My husband, he's very funny. Like, I try to act like, oh, you're not funny, ha, ha, ha. But he really is, he, he makes me laugh. He shows me love, love, definitely love. My wife is, I don't know if it's words that can describe her. My wife is an amazing person. Definitely a woman after God's heart. When I was pregnant with our son, TJ, I knew I wasn't going to church and I was like, I had to get back in church. I knew he really didn't care about going to church. I knew about God. I knew about him. I didn't know him personally. 
I have a responsibility of raising our kiddo. I can't like force it on him, but I have to pray for him. I always had to pray for him and ask the Lord to open up his heart. In church, you get that time where they ask people to stand up. And you'll, you'll be sitting there, you'll be like, no. Nah. And you, you have some in your spirit that tells you, hey, stand up. Proclaim that God is, is everything. And I'm like, oh, no, nah, I, mean, I, I mean, God know my heart and you know, all these other things. And I, I think that one time when, when, when God pushed, he felt that nudge, say, hey, stand up. It was in Fort Lauderdale, Pompano Beach. He said, hey, you know what, you guys, you need to be baptized. We were coming to support him. I didn't know I was coming in there with him. We went to the beach, my family was present, and we walked out into the water. They baptized him, they baptized me as well. He actually helped baptize me. I mean, there's no words. It's just prayers are answered. That was, that, that was an amazing experience, <laughs> really amazing. What's bad about it is being scared that, you know, you don't know if he's gonna be okay and like what kind of people he's gonna see that day. I told him as well, I was like, sweetheart, when you come into this house, this is a safe place for you, babe. My dad sold dope. He, he was in prison for each of my mom's five kids. My dad, just fast forward and thinking of, you know, hey, uh, what you think about being a cop? <laughs> I was like, no, not me. The community and everything teaches that, no, I'm not no snitch. I'm not going and being no cop and stuff like that. I, that. That's not what I'm doing. When I gave my life to Christ, God had a different plan. And he had that conversation with me like, I, I need you there. I honestly need you here in this profession. I didn't understand it. And he's like, listen, sometimes you're gonna come in contact with people, usually on the darkest days of their life. And your job is not to convert and make them Christian. Your job is to plant the seed in them by how you work, how you interact with them. Some of the things that we've encountered and seen on this job, I mean, it'll keep a lot of people up. I try my best to leave work at work, but sometimes work spills over to home. Sometimes I have to figure out my balance for him too, because I know he needs to vent too as well so he he knows what to tell me and what not to tell me and then just to give him support where he needs it you can take a lot of people to jail but how am i engaging the community so some of those same people that i, I had the opportunity to take to jail also help them with get them jobs i wanted to change the narrative and by by doing that is going to the football games going to the practices engaging the young folks. Say, hey, how you doing? And I mean, some of them, it was a little reluctant, like what, what are the cops doing out here? Our job is to serve and protect. Sometimes you're in a situation where you're protecting people. They, they may not like you, they, may, they can't stand your guts, but our job is to protect them from other people. You can come in contact with people during domestic disturbances, during child abuse. How do you explain or how do you help someone whose child is addicted to pornography. And I have kids around the same age, around 10 years old, eight to 10 years old, addicted to pornography. There's, there's no class for how do you deal with this. Knowing that he's out there protecting other people before himself is kind of scary. So um, that's something that I need to pray about. This is headquarters. Somebody just shot out the front glass. We need. The guy was shooting up the police station. He had an armored truck. So then the year after, at a rally. 2016, the shooting. Some of the same officers that I walk in the hallways with lose their lives at a rally. He was there and the police officers passed away and we went to their memorial. How do you recover from that? And just seeing that and thinking that could have been my father, that uh, was scary. The general public is not gonna run and answer that call. We need more God-fearing or great police officers because we don't know that they're a bad police officer until they do something bad. No more can we say 
no, I don't want to be no police officers. I don't want to be no snitch. We are the front line of dealing with a lot of things, police brutality, racial profiling. If you choose not to do it, don't get mad at somebody else because they're patrolling your community. We will have much more on the death of George Floyd and the firings of four Minneapolis police officers. I'm from Minnesota, so all that stuff that happened happened in my city. God made us to be together, and I was not raised that way. And I'm from a multicultural family. And I grew up, and I didn't get teased. I didn't get made fun of. I was nurtured and loved and by people in my neighborhood. And to see my city like that, we are not called to be like that. It, hurt, it just hurts. Protesters throwing rocks, vandalizing. Everyone's calling him up and saying, hey, what do you think about this, blah, blah, blah. To the death of George Floyd. He can't take off his color and he's a police officer. That's who he is. I don't want, the, I don't want you to say, I don't see color. I want you to see color. I want you to not only see it, but I want you to embrace the similarities and the differences. And if you are able to do that out of love, you'll be able to come to some type of common ground and understand wholeheartedly we are a part of one race, the human race. I knew something was different with Ezra. I would Google things, stay up late at night and just kind of like, hmm. I knew something was just off. I would cry a lot just because I was like, why? For me, it was rough. It was really, really rough. It was met with denial. It was met with a lot of different things. Ezra has autism, so he is in his own world a lot, but he has all the world love in the world, so he's very loving at times. Huge highs. And then sometimes tear jerkers, you know, for certain things that he's done. It may be small accomplishments, for other kids, but it's huge for us. He can't say, Mommy, I love you, but you know he loves you because, like, randomly he'll hug you or just be by you. Thinking of a young black male growing up and nonverbal, I see people all the time that have uh, certain challenges and etc. and I'm thinking about my son. And let's say even if he came in contact with people or police or anything, he may not understand your verbal commands. He may not understand what you're trying to get him to do or whatever, or he may not respond the way you want him to. How is the world gonna embrace my son? He's taught me in the four years that he's been here that love is not just, hey, I love you, not just hearing I love you. He shows us how to love and him loving us like we know that he loves us. We're doing everything we could to point them toward God. That's my Lord and Savior. I'm glad that I have him in my life. I will say there has been a lot of hard times where I felt like he wasn't there. As soon as we found the right church when we moved here, I felt like that's how everything changed. It made me a better person because of it too. Oftentimes, we're having conversations with them. And that's when, that's when mm -hmm. a lot of things come out like, oh, okay, like, how, what did you think about this? What did you think about that? This is a, a safe environment. So whatever whatever it is, you are okay, you are safe, you are loved. We try to be mindful of what we put in, in our kids so that, you know, we know the type of fruit that hopefully Lord willing will come out. They're being desensitized to a lot of different things. Even the, the shows and movies that we watch, our kids are walking around, they're seeing all these things. Keep Christ as the foundation. Absolutely. Because that doesn't change. Mm -mm. The thing is, it's for your kids to not to view you as a friend. View you as a parent, because your friend can tell you to do all kinds of things you have no business doing. Our job is to plant that seed. Mm -hmm. But if we don't plant it, or if we don't, uh, that, oh, we're, we're that's, right that's on us. Mm -hmm. Our kids, for us, is our first ministry. She can always sleep. Uh, 
while I'm driving. He'll close my mouth like, he's, he'll, <laughs> I can tell I fell asleep. I wasn't like, going to say that. <laughs> he just this. <laughs> and it will make, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, honey. We want our home to feel safe and comfort and loved. Okay, I'll give you both $5. Like that. <laughs>